What's up, guys? How you doing? I'm Paul. I'm Morgan. I'm Carl. And today's <laughs> video is Hillsong, a mega church exposed documentary, and we are going to be giving our reaction from three Christian perspectives. Pumped to have Carl here with us. Carl, when I tagged you on Instagram, or when I <laughs> said featuring Caroline, I didn't say featuring Carl because people would get confused that we had Carl Lentz. <laughs> In the house. You guys, I'm the next best thing. <laughs> Honestly, that would have maybe been good clickbait. I didn't even think about that. Why didn't you take advantage of that? I could have taken advantage. <laughs> I am Carl. He Carl. wouldn't have been alive. Because I don't I don't yeah. know if Carl Lentz has done any type of interviews no, since it's, everything yeah. happened. No. But I didn't want to clickbait him. I like being transparent with you guys. So we I would have done it to y'all. <laughs> Well, we are pumped to have our friend Caroline here to weigh in. We all watched the three-part docu-series this week, yes. so we're all ready to bring some, some, some stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes, some stuff. But before we bring that stuff, make sure you subscribe to this channel. We make videos on culture, social issues, and the church from a Christian perspective to help you have hope. And, and be, be free. free. Freedom, Beautiful. freedom, freedom. Awesome. Freedom. Big shout out to our patrons. <laughs> Thank you guys for the support that you bring. Seriously, you guys are such a huge part of us being able to come here each week and do this. We have a patron Zoom call scheduled for next week. So we will let our patrons know when that is, when we will get to see you all face to face and just get to connect and know you all better that way. All right. Oh, yeah. And if you want to become a patron, click the link below each video. We would love to have you. So Morgan, as we kick things off, sometimes we take a little while to get into it. Um, I thought for today, before we say anything else, mm -hmm. before any of us say one more word, let's play. I just took like 15 seconds of the trailer, just so those of you who have no clue what's going on, play 15 seconds of the trailer. I'm not touching the computer. <laughs> just like, uh, no. Yeah, we... First one. Uh, okay. Bono, Vanessa Hudgens, Kevin Durant. It wasn't just this Australian startup anymore. It was Justin Bieber's church. They've had over 3 billion views on YouTube. Hillsong changed the way that many of us saw how church could be done. We forgot to tell you guys to look away when they mentioned Justin Bieber's name because of Carl Lentz's very inappropriate <laughs> photo and he is the way he is dressed but so honestly that's a that's something to talk about so yes i i do feel kind of bad many of you guys will be like what who cares but i actually morgan and i had planned to say hey there's a photo of carl lentz in this little trailer clip we're gonna play with his pants down pretty low i meant to say just disclaimer i didn't i apologize anyway so let's let let me start out by saying this in regards to any documentary, there is typically some type of agenda, even if the people creating the documentary, the producers say, hey, we're trying to do just a complete 360 view, get all the different takes. Normally, there is emotions that they want the viewers to feel. Right. Um, also, they're interviewing a lot of people in this documentary that were probably, well, that were obviously hurt by the church, hurt by Hillsong, Australia, or... New York City. And so it is just important to realize I'm not just going to watch everything and then get your pitchforks and torches. Right. right. Hillsong. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I will say I, I don't feel like this documentary did like a 360 of like interviewing people who still like think really highly of mm. um, Hillsong. Mm. I think it was more just like, let's get all the people who have been hurt by them or not to say like everyone that they interviewed talked super down on Hillsong, mm -hmm. but like there were, they were just sharing concerns, sharing thoughts, and it was never really putting Hillsong in a positive light. So. But I will say, I mean, they did reach out to they Carl did. Lentz, they, they did. reached out to Brian, like they did reach out to these people for comment. Yes. And they did not respond. So that also that could be because there was a lack of response mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. the side of Hillsong. Yeah, that's true. I like what you said, um, Morgan. I, I do think there were people interviewed that obviously they were mad. They got hurt by Hillsong. And now it looks like they're not even Christians anymore because we were looking on some of their Instagrams. And it's like, okay, these people are literally atheists or something like that. But there was, they interviewed preacher 
Preachers and Sneakers, yeah. mm-hmm. the guy behind that. And he seems like a solid dude. And there were other solid people, it would seem, that were interviewed. Yeah. Carl, right before we kind of get into the nitty gritty of this documentary and what it exposed, literally the name of it is uh, Hillsong, a mega church exposed. That's the name of the documentary. You can mm-hmm. watch it on Discovery Plus. Yes, yeah. Before mm-hmm. we get into the nitty gritty, Carl, you mentioned you, you saw or you read to us the other day, was it one of like the worship leaders or someone that still goes to Hillsong and he oh what no. was the so gist? he doesn't he doesn't go to Hillsong but he's a worship pastor or he does worship for elevation okay and he was just kind of coming out not necessarily in defense of Hillsong but more like Christians you need to be careful with how you respond to this like you don't need to this doesn't need to become like some sort of like a social media like witch hunt type mm-hmm. thing like we need to you know, go into every single Hillsong church and like try to find the the bad guys, I guess. So I think he was coming at it, you know, as kind of a Hillsong sympathizer in the sense that just because these things happen doesn't, you know, disregard the entire work of Hillsong. Sure. And so I, that, that was his whole thing. Yeah. I think that's a good point. I do think it's interesting that this is someone you said from Elevation, right? which so he's, is yeah. another mega church with some of the same um, kind of styles and structures that we saw with Hillsong that mm-hmm. perhaps were part of the downfall mm-hmm. of them. So that's something interesting as well. And we'll get more of that. I'm not trying to discredit what he said. But mm-hmm. I think he brought up some good points. Mm-hmm. So I'm willing to just open up the conversation. I got some notes slash yeah. kind of an outline. You got some notes. Yeah, I just have notes really just to like look just things I think were interesting. So you go and then I'm sure I honestly believe ours probably overlap. I bet so. they do. Okay. Well, I, I just had this to start things off. Let's talk about um, we're going to get into specifics. The scandal with Carl Lentz um, and just specific stuff they brought up in the film, the documentary. But does here's a question: Does the mega church model concern us across the board? And should churches try to expand that much? Should they? Yeah, as Hillsong, literally, they they went global, and it was there was obviously a very clear emphasis: we are taking our church global. Lots of other churches, big time, but just mega church model. How do you guys feel about it? So I grew up for many years going to a mega church in um, Louisville, Kentucky, Southeast Christian Church, and I loved it. Um, But looking back on it, I'm like thinking about could I ever go back to that type of church? Yeah. Um, Could I see myself taking our kids there? And truly, like, I still love Southeast Christian. I still appreciate what they're doing for the communities around Louisville and in Kentucky. Um, I think Dave Stone is an incredible man of God. I don't know as much about Kyle Edelman. He's now the, like, head pastor. But anywho, I could not go back to a mega church just because I feel like the community and like the fellowship was really hard to find and I found it in certain ways because I just got very plugged in and volunteering and and doing that type of stuff and I mean I was volunteering a lot (laughs) but um yeah I don't know I just feel like mega churches are just not where it's at but that's I'm saying all that and like I had a really blessed time okay. at my mega church. Well, real quick, uh, Daniel says God still uses mega churches for His glory. Mm-hmm. Michaela says mega churches are concerning things. Mm-hmm. Um, Abby says it's easier for mega churches to fall because I feel like these pastors aren't held accountable. Well. Carl, what are your quick thoughts on that? Yeah, so I grew up in like the opposite of what Morgan grew <laughs> up. Like I, I think on a good day, my church had maybe 200 members. Um, so I am not necessarily like, I don't, I didn't really have that much of an opinion about mega churches until I started hearing about a lot of the controversial things happening in a lot of mega churches. And so I, you know, for me, I just think that with more people, like not with more people, but just I don't know who said it, but someone said something about accountability. I just feel like with these mega churches, there isn't that much accountability or as much accountability as what there needs to be. Mm-hmm. 
And so, well, yeah. Can, that's, I, can I say this? Yeah. So we're talking mega churches. Let's actually narrow it a little more to, to specifically the documentary, mm -hmm. the mega church kind of a uh, culture where it becomes celebrity culture. Yeah. Celebrity yeah. culture. We got the celebrity pastors. There was a part in the documentary where it talked about like suddenly you have this Hillsong, New York city and everybody's welcome. Come center, come as you are downtown or wherever, right in the heart of New York city. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly it was like a guy was going in to, to sit down and there was like VIP seating. Didn't yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the volunteers was talking about how one time he sat someone down in yeah. a reserved seat that he didn't know was reserved, and he got pulled to the side and got yelled at and was yeah. like, that is for our celebrities. You can't sit normal people there. So suddenly yeah. you've got the celebrity culture coming from the pastor down. That is like, okay, this is a whole nother ball game. Your mm -hmm. uh, mega church experience and I, I have some concerns definitely with any mega church. Just I do. Mm -hmm. I still think good good fruit can come out of them. And I'm grateful for so much that they do. But man, yeah. uh, there's potential for a lot of downside with mega churches. But then you take it even more narrow. I don't think you're, the mega church you went to had the celebrity culture as much. Yeah, I remember like a specific time when Peyton Siva came and like he was a U of L basketball player and was very well known and a big star in Louisville and like he became friends with um, the son of Dave Stone, and so he would come and like sit in the very front row with like Dave Stone's family, and I just remember people like you know wanting to go up to him and they had like some security of like hey you guys need to give him a space Ooh, whatever. So there is a little bit. So a little bit. It's, it's kind of disturbing like the special treatment given to celebrities in this mm -hmm. church environment. Like I think when you take on the role of being a celebrity, like when you are a celebrity, like you and you want to go to church, that's fine. But I just I don't think like the church having specific seating mm -hmm. for celebrities is is at all what the lord would have wanted i mean paul gets on to peter about like um you know uh gosh in corinthian or was it in galatians ja james there's a spot in james that talks about you know if you're like favoring favoring certain yeah. people that have a better more expensive image in the church so literally some of these churches it seems like they're doing literally the opposite of what we're told to do in scripture yeah and that's where i start and like that might not seem like a big deal to you guys but as like the moment you start deviating from the model that scripture gives us is the moment that you really do need to take a step back and ask yourself like what else are we deviating from? Because well, more often than not, if there's one red flag, yeah, there oh, are multiple. That's mm -hmm. where there's smoke. There's often a fire. Let's let, as I'm thinking about the celebrity churches. Let's just talk about like the pastors of celebrity churches. Yeah. One thing that I will totally admit that I am guilty of in the past, and I hope that I I, I believe. Hopefully, Morgan, you would agree. <laughs> what are you about to say? That I've come <laughs> a long way in getting kind of like amazed or uh, yeah. what's it called? Just like starstruck starstruck yeah. by a pastor who is cool, who is good looking, mm. who is super godly and super charismatic. And he delivers the message with so much confidence and coolness. And I would say I used to be, I was like, okay, I love this person. <laughs> and now I hope that I have yes, yes, you've come. come a long way. But I think that that I'm just, I'm just saying this, with a lot of conviction, I think so many people get, I mean, right now there's 380 in the chat. Guys, it's so easy to say this person up on stage, look at their image. They're super spiritual. They are super uh, good with words and they speak with so much confidence. I just am putting them on a pedestal. Yeah. Don't do that. And I mean, and I think that that's where, like, I kind of want to take it back to the documentary a little bit. It was very intentional in talking about how intentional Hillsong is with that. Like, they aren't hiring ugly preachers. <laughs> yeah. And that's, and that is a great marketing technique. Like, this is not just, like, oh, they found someone that was really cute. Like, mm -hmm. they sought this guy out. Like, they knew he was going to bring people in the door. Mm -hmm. And so that's also where I'm like, this is this is kind of disturbing. I mean, we're seeking out people who are 
Well, and it's not just that he's it's not just that yeah. he's good looking, he's but got the charisma? way he dresses he's a like person? he dresses like a superstar. He's the coolest guy in the room. Like you said, mm-hmm. he's so good at just his delivery. Yeah. And at some point, not not that any of that stuff is necessarily bad, even though I feel like, you know, when you go from dressing cool to dressing cool and your outfit is $10,000, yeah. there's kind of a difference there. There's a little bit mm-hmm. of a... Yeah. Well, and I feel like what was revealed big time throughout this docuseries is that Hillsong specifically, but, you know, you could probably look at a lot of mega churches and see that they're not running as a church. They're running as a business, as a corporation. And when you start running your church like a corporation, like you've just gone the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. And it's not to say that we shouldn't have this desire to reach as many people as we want. But I think, like, as I was watching it, I was just like, are we meant to, like, be this big, like, as as a small specific church? We're going global. (laughs) We're taking Hillsong to the world. (laughs) All the ritziest places in the world. Well, yeah, yeah. that's, like, (laughs) I think that's where I struggle the most is that I think as a church in general, the Church of Jesus Christ, like, I do think we are meant to reach the far corners of the earth, Mm -hmm. but as a individual brand, Mm -hmm. as a, as Hillsong, you know, enter in whichever one, I don't think so because I, I genuinely believe that when, when we start getting that big, Mm -hmm. our heads also start getting pretty big. Right. It's like if the church at Corinthians decided to brand and it was like the church of corinthians in thessalonica the (laughs) church of corinthians in rome well and that's the other thing too and it's it's like hillsong i think started on the foundation of jesus Mm -hmm. and but there's this passage in corinthians i think i don't know but it talks about how like you can build your foundation and it can be on Jesus, but then if you start building other foundations on top of that, like other, that's any not going to work. Other than Christ, it's not going to work. And so I yeah. think the um, one of the I can't remember if it might have been the guy with the sneaker thing. <laughs> yeah, that was a cool guy. But there was some person on there. I can't remember, even though I literally watched it today. I should have written his name down. But he gave like the six C's for Hillsong oh, yeah. Church, concert, CDs college cinema and conferences and i feel like those like that gets at really the heart of like what it looks like to not have like ministries like offshooting your church but like to have separate foundations that are not of the you know like concerts and cd like it's just it's it's very it's very concerning business well one line that um there was a ukrainian pastor him and his wife who were like pastors of a hillsong church in ukraine in kiev uh they were being interviewed and he talked about how you know he was being really pushed to build this church in kiev and and whatnot and supposedly brian said to him you are building this church for me and the pastor in kiev was like no i'm not i'm building this church for jesus christ and to save souls like Mm -hmm. this isn't for you and to me that just shows like this mindset shift of it's no longer about jesus it's about me and my brand and what i've built in this business this corporation and that's really terrifying honestly and sad it's really sad to see that and go ahead no and i I know I initially said that it was built on the foundation of Jesus, and it may have been, but I don't want to ignore that while the initial Hillsong was being built, the founder was touching little boys, was not just touching. It it appears that that was absolutely there. That's an indisputable fact. And so with that being said, I do think that should cause us as Christians to be like, okay, this might have been built in the name of Jesus. But was it built on Jesus? I don't know. Yeah. And and I think that we yeah. really need to take inventory. Well, it's, it's one of those things that it's like, okay. The Can Ra- something good come out right, of someone who is. And that's a that's a debatable thing. You got the Ravi Zacharias and it's like he, yeah. he did so many things that 
I believe produce good fruit. And then suddenly it's like, wow, during this, all this good stuff, he was living in deep secret sin. So yeah. can the good fruit still remain? Gosh. Yes, but yeah, it goes to show that God can use an evil man to do good, but it makes me question, like, God, why did you use you an said, evil man? Like, why did you let his one thing you church said, take off? As we were watching this, you were like, okay, this guy is what? so yeah. perverted, yeah. and yet their church is starting to grow and, and blossom. Like, God, why? And, yeah. man, the mysteries Well, and that's of- where I start to wonder is, did God have anything to do with it? And I know that's a very controversial take, but, like, Mm. Satan also works. He also he you masquerades know, as an angel of light. And so I'm not saying yeah. that I'm just saying, like right. I don't think that this was a missed opportunity for Satan. Yeah. And I yeah. hear you. Well and I I agree with you there, Caroline. There can be I, I believe there can be people at almost any church right. that like a Christian church. You know, there's imperfections in any church, but I believe there can be Christians that are hungry for the Lord at just about any church. Mm -hmm. Hopefully as they grow, they'll maybe get out of churches with strong concerning elements. Um, Well, so one thing I I saw in the documentary, they were talking about Carl Lentz and they said, do you believe it was maybe interviewing someone that used to go to Hillsong, New York City? Do you believe Carl Lentz is a narcissist? Mm -hmm. And then the couple people were like, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Or yeah, well, at least one person was. No, they all said yes. Okay. And I guess my thinking is when I heard that, there probably is i'm sure there's a personality trait of like wow this person 18 year old kid is a narcissist but to me i feel like anyone can become a narcissist so yeah. to me it's like who what, was carl Lentz a narcissist in high school M- maybe well they talked about his experience in <laughs> yeah. high school and it sounded like yeah he, he, was, was, a player. he was a player okay yeah. but but to me it's like it is when the culture becomes um, where you're literally kind of worshiping this pastor mm-hmm, yeah. and he becomes a celebrity that I, I feel like, okay, I guess my point is you could take a very humble man. It could be anybody. And really. then oh, yeah. five years yeah. later, give put him, him in this situation. Mm-hmm. They are a narcissist. Yeah. Put him in the spotlight. Give him some power. Yeah. I mean, anyone well, can turn into a narcissist. And that's why I think this is not a good idea. Celebrity Christianity is not a good idea because at the end of the day, celebrity Christianity is not a good idea because at the end of the day, this is so Gen Z. We weren't made to be the main character. Let's go, baby. <laughs> like, Let's go, baby. No, but like in all honesty, we were not made to be the ones in the spotlight. We were made to put the spotlight on Jesus. We're supposed to be the ones like directing the spotlight, right? Mm-hmm. And so I think any time that we put ourselves in the spotlight and it's just so much caution. Because because yeah. I think about other I think about other people who are celebrity Christians like I think about Sadie Robertson and I think she's done you know a good job but you just so much caution has mm-hmm. to be taken yeah. um, and uh, accountability. I mean, oh even with our small platform that we have here, this on one YouTube. gets a big hat all the time. <laughs> let me tell ya, crazy girl no. thinking she's. All that of the I'm keeping her humble. <laughs> totally kidding. I was like, wait, is she serious? <laughs> oh, you're gonna make the pregnant lady cry. No, <laughs> <laughs> no but the Phoenix one, I get a bit cut. I'm like, yeah, no problem. My God. <laughs> oh my goodness. But no, seriously, even with our platform, like we have to be like, you know, we'll for an example, someone sent me a message today and uh, sent like a reel and was like, hey, I think this could maybe be a word for you. I think you guys are becoming too legalistic. And like my first reaction How is- Who d- sent you that? How d- <laughs> Okay, Caroline, get on it. My first reaction is to be like, okay, well, who are you? And but and then like Paul and I were talking about it and I was like, no, like this seems like a genuine person who she said She's like obviously she misguided. loves our video. <laughs> She's obviously very misguided, but- Stop. <laughs> She said she, you know, loves us and she's loved our past videos and whatnot. And so, like, I genuinely took it to heart and I responded back to her with several videos of me talking to her and just, like, telling her, hey, like, I appreciate appreciate you reaching out. And, like, I don't ever want to come to a place where, 
you know, there are times when a stranger reaches out and says something that I'm just going to brush it off and not take that to heart because some people are just being ridiculous. But like, I want to always be in a place of receiving correction from the people around us, um, you know, our friends and family and even you guys, our patrons. Like, I don't. Yeah. And I feel like. As soon as you become this celebrity and people can't ever speak into your life, even your mentors won't or don't or can't speak into your life. You're surrounded by just yes men. And I think we actually probably see that in regards to certain celebrity pastors. Lots of yes men. Yeah. And it's almost impossible for genuine criticism to to get through, to penetrate. Well, so let's talk about Hillsong worship. Um, Worship was a fairly big element. I think, was it episode one or two? I think it was one. Mm-hmm. Or maybe two. I don't know. I can't remember. The first two were really about, like, worship. Carl Lentz and, like, and this, that oh. whole... You guys, yeah, maybe you guys, the first episode, because the second episode was really mainly about Carl. So, w- worship. Um, There's kind of two elements to the worship. There's the one where you saw Hillsong Australia pumping out all of these songs. One thing Mm -hmm. that someone said, and I actually literally said this to Morgan probably five seconds before they said it on the documentary. I said, (laughs) you know what I'm getting the sense of? That Hillsong is turning popular secular pop songs and kind of making them or blending them Mm -hmm. with worship and then producing something that is kind of hyper palatable to a mainstream Christian person. And then that's kind of exactly what they said. But in regards to their worship, Um, do you, what do you guys think? Cause I saw, I think someone quoted in the documentary and said, uh, is there worship emotional manipulation where Mm -hmm. people were saying, oh, this is, I'm, I'm, this is such a, uh, like awesome spiritual experience, but was it actually emotional manipulation? Yeah, I think, uh, and be careful because there's a lot of churches this still play a ton of Hillsong worship. Yeah. yeah. As a worship leader, you know, I don't think it's wrong to have pumped up music, to have uh, the drums or the piano playing in the background as, like, a pastor is, is praying and stuff. But I do think, like, when y- your whole goal is, like, set out to not... <sighs> Holy Spirit lives within us, so it's not, like, welcoming the Holy Spirit. He's already there. But it, that, like, kind of becomes your mindset of, like, oh, we want to get people in their feels, bring up that bass at this time. Because Turn down the lights at this time because that's really going to move people. Like, that yeah. seems wrong. <laughs> that's not natural. That's not letting the Holy Spirit be in control. You're literally planning it out and manipulating people. But if it comes naturally and this is just how it goes, then great. Um, Those in the live chat right now, I am curious, when does a worship song become emotional manipulation? Like, that's a genuine question. Well, it was interesting, too, because in the documentary, they said that when you go to Hillsong, um, you will hear songs you've never heard before Mm -hmm. because they're testing them out on the audience. Yeah. Like, like you are lab rats in a way (laughs) to these songs. They want to know. Oh, no, she didn't. I did. Oh, no, she didn't. They want to know if you they're going to get the response that they, and so to me that says that, yeah, they're looking for a very intentional response. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's true. Um, Michaela says old early 2000s Hill song was decent, even good, but their new stuff may be watered down and emotional. Joanna says we need more thumbs up guys. If you're watching live, <laughs> Take I two can go seconds. give it a thumbs up on my phone. Thank you. Take two seconds. Let's Take get that two to two. Seconds. Come on. <laughs> two million. Let's get it up. Let's get it to 140 two right million. now. If you're watching yeah. the playback, hit that thumbs up. Oh. Uh, Send money to love okay. with Remitly. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. I saw somewhere where someone talked about how they're trying to mold God to fit what we want as opposed to us molding ourselves to fit God, like in regards to worship. And I thought that was good. Uh, Yeah, I'd definitely say that's a thing. Uh, Real quick. So Brooklyn says, I I feel, I thank you, Carl. I feel like (laughs) when they use repetition in the lyrics, Okay, but even you got old hymns that see. That I do like that. repetition because sometimes it takes a moment. Sometimes for it to you really don't know me. the song either. 
that too. Like me. Um, and so having a very repetitive song is kind of Why Dia Mo- uh, says, music is intended to bring us closer to God, to praise him, not to make us feel good, but couldn't we? It doesn't feel Raising good. Raising God, may, yeah, makes you feel so, good. So, you know, there's that balance. Um, I remember- it becomes emotional. Sorry, one sec, Carl. No, Let me read no. a few more of these. It becomes emotional Indeed. manipulation when you want when you want it to be emotional ma- uh, manipulation. That is a little too deep for my brain Meaning right now. Meaning like when the church behind the scenes is Right, like, like the song in oh. and of itself might not be like emotionally manipulative. Rachel says, I think it becomes emotional manipulation when it starts talking about self rather than talking about Christ. Mm. So many of these songs are treating Jesus as our boyfriend or girlfriend. Whoa. Um, I think it all comes down to intention behind the production. I, I like that because... If I'm being honest, as I get a little older and perhaps a little bit more wiser, definitely wiser, (laughs) but I don't want to say skeptical, Mm -hmm. but I think Morgan, you would agree we have become more cautious Yes. and I start looking a little closer at, we talked about Maverick City recently and seeing them get their award at the Grammys and, and maybe certain people at Elevation and just wonder, I wonder to myself, because I can't make a strong judgment just based off of maybe some small things. Maybe I can start to develop some type of judgment, mm-hmm. depending on how much I've seen. But sometimes it's more of just, I wonder what that person's day-to-day Christian walk looks like. What does their life look like? Because they're up there on the big stage leading mm-hmm. this worship set. But what is their heart before God truly like? Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's, I mean, another part of the documentary of guy who was a worship pastor at Hillsong I don't want to use the word the S-E-X word but assaulted assaulted in a specific manner a girl you're talking about in episode three Mm -hmm. no it was in episode two two two. okay was it okay yeah and I mean I what's disturbing to me about that well is a that he would do that but b the initial sort of hush hush about it from her being told to not talk about it to um nothing really being done about it until almost a year later even though she had reported it like Mm -hmm. it's just all when we start to care more about like covering for our pastors and our worship leaders than we do our own congregants yeah that's when i think we have a serious i mean actually before then i think we have a serious issue but that's another thing i'm like we have a serious issue yeah, definitely. Um, Let me read these two more comments and then we'll get back to it. Uh, Samantha says, I don't think anyone who's hearing Hillsong music for the first time would be able to tell it apart from normal pop songs. Interesting. That's pretty tough uh, words. Joanna says, I think when the purpose is to deliberately create a very emotional response and that becomes equally or more important than the message of the song, it's emotional manipulation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. Very good. Very good. So the last point I had, you guys, was um, it talks some about the money abuse. I don't think we need to dwell too much on that. I don't have that much to say, but they did emphasize that money was being abused in the documentary. And I guess that's one thing that I'm like, we don't really need to talk about because it doesn't surprise me. I don't think it should really surprise anyone else. Like, Mm. if they're running it like a business. Right. Duh. And if no one's being held accountable, then what do you expect? Like, I just, I, I've never known a preacher to be able to walk around in a ten to fifteen thousand dollar Louis Vuitton Supreme sweatshirt. That's <laughs> not something that, like, I think Wild. preachers. That's not that was, a. That was a, sw- a sick hoodie, though. Oh, it's it is. That oh, one hundred percent. Do I want my pastor to be wearing that? No. Probably not. No. And that's not to say I don't think they can have nice things, but I just, I think about the payroll of a normal pastor and it is, it is not that. Mm -hmm. So it goes back to, yeah, just genuinely questioning, uh, where is this money coming from? And then how is it being used? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even if it's like, maybe this pastor just wrote, like he's Joel Osteen or these other pastors that write these books that tons of people are buying. So they have a lot of money. It's still, if he's wearing a $10,000 hoodie, that gets a little bit icky. But it went a little further in this documentary of uh, saying that people had credit cards 
Mm -hmm. that they were given by the church mm -hmm. and they were buying like expensive purses with like with tithing money yeah, yeah. that's with, a, according to the documentary it's i would be in really and i whatever. didn't i didn't have time but i would be really interested to look into like obviously like discovery plus ran the documentary but i'd be interested yeah. like to figure out well exactly who these people are that i would because that is is like is that going off of a little bit of just like oh i I would hope that these facts in the documentary, and some of them are very public knowledge, like obviously the Carl Lentz scandal, very mm -hmm. public knowledge, but stuff like that, like, oh, they were spending credit cards on expensive hotel rooms and purses. Like, I'm sure that probably did happen, but. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it would be interesting to like know. For sure. <sighs> any, any final thoughts, Carl? I thought it was interesting in the documentary how they really brought a lot of it back to the initial, the Pentecostal movement. Mm. Um, mm. and I, I don't think I'm curious because Hillsong falls under the assemblies of God, assemblies of God church. Yeah. And so when everything happened with Frank, the initial founder of Hillsong, the dad, and that kind of got swept under the rug, Brian Houston's father. And then when Brian Houston got found out for knowing about that situation, and that got, I'm just trying to figure out where the Assemblies of God is. Because I know, so I grew up in the Presbyterian Church of America. And any time something crazy happened or big happened, like, I remember, like, my pastor, like, they go, like, mm -hmm. they meet together and they talk about whatever and different. Yeah. So, I don't know. I would be interested to, to sort of see where the Assemblies of God is in this. Because it's concerning to me that they're, in a sense kind of okaying this or they knew about i mean they knew about frank mm -hmm. they knew what he did yeah why haven't they shut um, down the church why, why haven't, haven't they... right like or at least said you guys aren't a part of our mm -hmm. you know yeah. you're you're your own thing now yeah we don't condone because um, that that i mean so i think it speaks to me a little bit about interesting about assemblies of god and then just you know kind of like the pentecostal movement in general i do think we need to be a little bit more hesitant to you know, just and we, go with every teaching. I've that, seen a lot of good things yeah. from Assemblies of God churches. So, oh, yeah. But it is kind of like, is there proper repercussions for, you know. No, uh, pedophilia. Yeah, like awful stuff among church leaders. Right. And on. we saw like the well, years ago with the Catholic church and just how much, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, sexual sin was being covered up there like as christians we should be the example to the world of right. handling sin rightly yeah morgan any final thoughts from you that is all all right guys comment below let us know your thoughts on this uh have you seen the documentary on discovery plus are you hearing about some of this stuff for the first time have you been uh kind of like you said caroline have mm -hmm. you seen the smoke and now suddenly here's the fire where you right. seeing caution flags and they were concerning to you and now here we are so let us know your thoughts keep the conversation going i'm looking forward to reading through those comments all right you guys have a wonderful rest of your day we will see you again here in just a minute for those of you who are on the live chat for the rest of you have hope and be free <laughs> hey guys, as you may have noticed, we get very few brand deals, which is why our patrons, the names you see here, are so important. You guys really are the lifeblood of this ministry. We could not do this without you all. If you believe in this content and you want to partner with us on Patreon, click the link below or just go to patreon.com slash Paul and Morgan show.